Well folks, welcome to the Bosch Drill Review where we are going to review this uh, Bosch Lion Drill this is the um, 18 volt Li2 ok so first off what you want to do is check that the box has the sealing stickers on the side if it was sold to you as new anyway and the official Bosch sticker there with the manufacturer's barcode on it and that uh, if it doesn't have that <coughs> then you could be in possession of grey goods, what are called grey goods, which are not not really made by Bosch. <laughs> so be careful. Now, when you open the lid, this is kind of what you should see. You should have some paperwork here. So you should have a handbook for the charger, a handbook for the drill, and a guarantee, which I think is three years ago, really. I'll go through that later on. I want to show you the drill first. So the drill will not be charged when you get it. It may have a little bit of residual charging, but it's not, it won't be fully charged up. When you pick the drill up, there should be a small amount of charge in it. It should spin. Okay. If it doesn't, then you've got a problem. But check these. This is the reverse and forward switch. And if it gets stuck in the middle, it won't move. So just check that first, make sure it's switched before you try it. The first thing I noticed with this drill is that uh, there's no there's no trigger lock. So that means you can't really use this on a drill stand. Uh, and I guess they're not really designed for that. So this handle is supposed to be insulated um, against electric shock in case you hit a cable or something as I understand it. So that's one of the features of the drill. Okay so to begin the review uh, I'm just going to run through the basic basic features. So this is a battery operated drill okay. Now the battery basically gets plugged into there. It looks like this and for the money you get a charger with it which is this device here. Okay so the battery is inserted See the slidey bit there? I've got my finger on. And then there's a little ridge just here. Okay, so you match those up basically. And it clicks in. And to release the uh, the battery, you just push this and pull forwards. And it comes off again. And I think that's pretty standard across a lot of these drills. So there's nothing, nothing difficult going on there. Now you can see here, you see how the green light goes to the middle? That means I've got half charge on this. And uh, if it goes to there, then you've got full charge on it. And if it goes to there, it's telling you you're low. Now, one of the features of this drill, which you don't get with cheaper drills, by the way, is what I've got here in my fingers is 0.8 millimeter wire. And that will not go into that chuck. So I would suggest that drilling uh, 0.8mm holes with a drill as big as this is probably not a good idea, <laughs> Cause you, unless you're in a drill stand or something. But that just goes to show you that you can get um, pretty fine drill bits into this, uh, right down to 0.8 by the looks of it. And probably, uh, judging looking at the end of it, I would say you could probably get something like a half mil drill bit in there. And that is pretty fine. Now the other end, if you open it up, and that's how you open it up by the way, you wind it by hand. You can get a total of a one centimetre drill bit in there. So it's one centimetre down to a half millimetre. That is a pretty well designed drill, drill chuck. Uh, so that is one of the plus points for this drill. It is very good for that purpose. So just to a quick run through all the features um, before we do a demo. Um, this is the trigger, which has no lock on it, um, that's forwards, and if you push it from the other side, because it goes through all the way at the back, then you're in reverse. And if you double, double lock it in the middle, like that, trigger locks and doesn't move. There's no trigger lock on this, so you uh, can't use it in a drill stand. Also, we have um, lights 
forwards and then back. This switch here, number one, reduces the speed of the drill. So if you want to drill plastics, you want a sharp drill bit and a very slow drill speed, this is the setting you would use. Um, if you want it, you know, very fast for normal normal drilling, I would say, if we want the number two. This this switch here moves. This this that there is for screwing, because this is a screwdriver combo. That's for drilling. And that's hammer. This here, this is the torque setting you use with a screwdriver, which varies the amount of force you can apply to the screw. Okay, folks, so that is pretty much everything on it. Saw it out, so we'll now do a little demo. <laughs> okay, to insert your drill bit. You basically adjust the chuck so that the drill bit will fit into the chuck jaws, like so, and then you uh, turn it. Now Bosch have very conveniently made this so that um, you don't need to put anything in it to stop it turning. You can just twist it and, uh, and it works just like that. Brilliant. Now that's a 3mm drill bit. And uh, we're just going to try this in a piece of pine. Okay, so in order to do this, that's your reverse, that's your forward, and then uh, what you want to do is make sure your little selector switch is there on the drill. And then we'll just do it again as a good demo. So you open up the chuck until it won't go any further. Then you can get a one centimetre drill bit and that's the biggest little fit. You might see we'd be only just get a little mill in there, but I don't think so. I think I, think I tried it and it doesn't work. I just tighten it. That's your one centimetre. It drills pine pretty easily. Here's a much bigger drill bit though, you've got, you got to notice that. That's, uh, so what if I set it to, if I set it to number one, which I think is what you're supposed to do with bigger drill bits. So to do screwdriving, set this, and then you've got this beast here to do torque with. So you can set different torques, depending on what you really need. And it's best to set the lowest torque you can, and the reason is that uh, it uses a certain amount of energy. And if you're drilling, say, 100 screws in a board or something like that, uh, if you've got the lowest torque you can get away with, you probably have a longer battery life before you need to recharge. Okay, so um, let me just open this up a little. Bosch themselves, uh, they supplied that, uh, which works just fine. It's only one size though, different screw heads are different sizes. For example, that is for a number six, and this one here fits a number five, and quite a few of the smaller ones. And the tip of this is magnetic, so you can see it clunking in there. Now this is probably what you need to do the interchangeable bit thing. And um, strangely enough, Bosch do not supply this with a drill, which is uh, kind of interesting. You would have thought they would, wouldn't you? Anyway, considering what the drill is for. <laughs> so now then, there are six, there are uh, three jaws on the chuck, and there's six faces on this hex. So you need to make sure it's seated properly uh, in between the three jaws of the chuck. If you don't, you'll find it will work loose very quickly, and it'll screw at a funny angle. So if you're ever worried about the power of these things, <laughs> have a look at that. I mean that's basically screwed that in and you know it accounts and get or anything. And there's a slightly very slightly bigger one here. Pine does catch quite well. 
because it's a soft wood. So you might have a little bit of cat sink in there. Now uh, the torque that I had set was about there. So if I just increase that to say, well, that's, that's the wrong direction. If I just increase that to say 20. There you can pretty much put a small screw in without countersinking. What I just demonstrated there was, if you push this switch here, uh, you basically reverse. If you get the screwdriver lined up straight, it won't jump like that. This is the number five. Okay, so we'll just give that a bump. You can see that's struggling now. And I've got the torque set around about there. So I'll put the torque right up and see, what, see how it curbs with it. So you can see, with the torque right up to max, it can get the screw in. But you will need to count sink if you're doing a number five. Number five is quite a big screw there. So I use number sixes in the Garage Youth Project on our TV channel. And uh, we needed to count sink those because uh, it wouldn't put them straight in, and they're a little bit too chunky for the screwdriver, but it does handle them okay. And I wouldn't worry about that. I did an entire roofing job with it, which is why I bought it, and uh, and it did very very well. And uh, if you want to take the number five out again, <laughs> stuck. Isn't it? Right, so that's not able to take out a number five once it's in. And I would think actually if you had a shorter number five like a, a one inch or a three quarter inch it probably would pull it out. Now that's kind of interesting. Okay so this is a pre-drilled three mil hole that we did earlier on in the video. And you can see there it goes in a little bit. Uh, without counter sinking, and I'll see if it... obviously if, if you pre drill it, there is less friction, and so it comes out a bit easier. Uh, so that's interesting though, because that means that if you don't pre drill, this is a, a pine joist, if you don't pre drill the joist, the screws are going to be in a lot tighter than if you do pre drill. Okay, so one of the advantages of this type of drill is that you've got these magnetic tips that can be pulled in and out and uh, you can get these which are basically different sized and shaped screwdriver bits which can be used for various purposes and um, the one that Bosch supplied actually doesn't have a flat end so you can't actually put that into this <laughs> strangely enough um, but you can get these pretty readily on the marketplace and there's lots of them about, and even the ones that are made in China are case hardened, so they're pretty well made. So uh, that's the main advantage of this, really. You can also get, as I understand it, you can get um, hex uh, drill bits too, which gives you quick change completely, and a hex countersink, and so on, so on. So um, from that respect, it is a good thing, but that's not part of this main drill. Okay, so your battery charger, it has the usual sort of lights on. These, these dots mean you're going to get a fast flash when it's got no charging and it's charging heavily. You can get a slow slash when it's about 80%, which means you can still use it. And you get a solid charge light when it's completely charged and you can just take it off and use it. I think that's the general idea of it anyway. The other thing that you get in the box is the paperwork, which is a three year guarantee as soon as you bought it. You go on their website and put that in and it gives you a three year guarantee, which is great. You also get a manual for the uh, the charger, which is mostly made up of um, different languages. The actual page for English is only about two pages and I don't tell you very much about it. And then there's also a manual for the drill, which I have mislaid somewhere, but it does exist. And that's pretty similar, it doesn't give you that much information. Okay, so there's one last thing with this drill, the first hole that I tried to drill. Up on the garage roof project, it was in like a corner of a beam, 
and it was pretty dark and I couldn't see what was going on. And uh, this particular drill, when you push the trigger, you see there? It has a very bright light LED which lights up the area for you, which is actually superb, works very, very well. And that's a very, very useful feature. I think the most drills have that these days, though. Well, that brings us to the end of this little demo. Thanks so much for watching, folks.